Welcome back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Emily Dickinson, an American poet who lived from 1830 to 1886, certainly one of the most famous American poets. Sadly, as you might know, Dickinson, while a prolific poet, was not known uh, during her lifetime particularly. I think even some of her friends didn't, wasn't, were not aware the degree to which she wrote and the degree to which she was so talented. The poem that I'm going to read today is called As Imperceptibly as Grief, borrows its title from the first line. This is how it goes. As imperceptibly as grief the summer lapsed away, too imperceptible at last to seem like perfidy, a quietness distilled as twilight long begun or nature spending with herself sequestered afternoon. The dusk drew earlier in, the morning foreign shone, a courteous yet harrowing grace as guest who would be gone. And thus without a wing or service of a keel, our summer made her light escape into the beautiful. So this is obviously kind of an elegiac poem for the passing of summer, I suppose, the, the fading away of it. But one of the things that I love that Dickinson does is the way she kind of, particularly at the end of a poem, as in this poem, she, she kind of has a way of subverting your expectations. I don't know if subverting is the right word. Doing the unexpected or kind of... Um, well, here, I'll explain. So throughout this poem, you kind of anticipate that the next word is going to rhyme. She, these are four four line stanzas here, quatrains. So you sort of expect that you're going to get a rhyme. In the in the third stanza, for example, you get the dusk drew earlier in, the morning foreign shone, a courteous yet harrowing grace as guest who would be gone. And it feels like even the way you look at it, shone and gone are very similar looking words. It feels like they they actually should rhyme, but she kind of keeps you on the edge. She doesn't give you that that sort of rhyme that, that feels really fulfilling. Same at the end here, you get our service of a keel and then into the beautiful. Beautiful doesn't rhyme with keel, but you kind of like mentally want it to, like you expect that you're going to say something that rhymes with it. You almost want to say beautiful <laughs> uh, to rhyme with keel, but obviously that's not what you're supposed to do. I think sort of, you know, that's one of the many ways that she kind of plays with the form. It's not formless, but she's playing with the form to sort of challenge the expectations that, that we come to the poem with. You know, it's classic Dickinson. Short lines, quatrains that are uh, full of dashes, um, interesting line breaks, lots of enjambment, and occasionally a word that seems out of place, like almost too formal, like the word perfidy. The rest of the poem is, is not very, um, you know, it doesn't use big words, so to speak. Um, it's fairly simple in terms of his vocabulary. Fairly similar just to the way someone might have spoken at the time. Perfidy, a word for treachery, I believe, is, uh, is a, it really stands out. But it's very interesting that in this poem, she drops this word perfidy, this concept of treachery, um, in a poem that's about the fading away of summer. She says, as imperceptibly as grief, the summer lapsed away. Too imperceptible at last to seem like perfidy, to seem like treachery. So... Um, seem like it's being stolen from you is kind of how I think about that. It's it's less it being stolen away and more the summer slips away. It kind of sneaks off um, into a, um, you know, into a hiding spot almost. That certainly makes it seem slower, uh, more gradual, less kind of sudden or shocking. Now, some people, the summer ends shockingly for some of us, um, but there's kind of, it, it makes summer feel kind of like it's languid, like it kind of, lingers for a while and slowly fades and slowly fades and slowly slips off until we get we get autumn. And then when you look back, it feels like it went fast, right? That's how I think of her poems sometimes. They feel like they kind of linger and they're over and you kind of look back and you're like, well, that felt fast and a little confusing. <laughs> uh, so one more time here is Emily Dickinson's As Imperceptible as Grief. As imperceptibly as grief the summer lapsed away, too imperceptible at last to seem like perfidy, a quietness distilled as twilight long begun, or nature spending with herself sequestered afternoon, 
The dusk drew earlier in, the morning foreign shone, a courteous yet harrowing grace as guest who would be gone. And thus, without a wing or service of a keel, our summer made her light escape into the beautiful. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks so much for listening. We'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you. Thank you.